some art tips on how to draw Pokemon more similarly to the original official style, which is done by Ken Sugimori for the Pokemon Company. Not all designs were by Ken Sugimori, but all of them have been redrawn by him for the official release art. I decided to do one sample Pokemon from each generation, first drawing the line art and then coloring them in. For the line art, the key things to keep in mind is that the line art should be very thin and there shouldn't be much, if any, definition of the line thickness. So the lines should stay pretty much uniform all the way along and be very thin. If copying an existing Pokemon, you should really look at the reference, study the proportions and geometric shapes, be prepared to do many practice sketches that in spite of the simplicity of some of the Pokemon, like Dedenne for example, getting the exact shape and size of the head, especially the head, is really hard. Getting every detail and proportion exactly perfect can be more difficult in simplified designs because a small mistake is amplified. There's simply less room for errors in a more simplified design than a more complex one, so it's important to really look at what the Pokemon looks like. I often advise using multiple references and looking at different angles if you're planning on changing a position. If you're trying to copy a reference exactly though, you can just copy it from the one reference. When posing Pokemon, whether they're your own, made up Pokemon, or previously existing official ones, get a more similar creature as a pose reference. This is very helpful. For example, for humanoid based Pokemon like the Lucario that I drew previously, you can use reference of a human, and then change it. Sometimes parts can be difficult like the legs, but it's still easier to start from a good reference than to start from nothing. Sometimes the reference of the Pokemon you're drawing is more than enough, and you can change the position easily, whereas other times it's actually very difficult. So getting an animal that is similar to the animal the Pokemon's based on in a position first can be very helpful. Or, as I said before, getting a human in a position that's similar. A human posing art app is useful, or you can take the pose yourself and take photos, or get a friend to pose for you. Whatever helps. Also, if you have three-dimensional toys or figurines of Pokemon that are pretty good, you can see it from all different angles in three dimensions, and that's actually extremely helpful. But you don't need this to be able to draw good Pokemon. If you do happen to have a good toy or figurine of a Pokemon, that's one that you can look at from different angles very easily. The other place to look at Pokemon from different angles easily is actually in the Pokedex, in Pokemon X and Y. A very good feature in that Pokedex is that you can actually look at and rotate the 3D models of all the Pokemon. So if you have a more complete Pokedex in those games, you can look at everything from 6th generation and earlier. Unfortunately, they seem to have removed this feature in later games. Remember that getting the coloration as close as possible is actually really important when you're coloring in a Pokemon. If you're working digitally, you can get your reference photo and steal the colors from it using a color picking tool. You can build up a palette this way. That way you'll get the colors exactly right. If you're working traditionally, use color swatches of the tools and try to mix the most perfect color when you're using colors you can mix, like with watercolors. Using swatches is a good way to double check that the color you're about to use is the most correct for what you're actually trying to depict. So when working on Pokemon, you can double check things and make sure that you're happy with it. For example, Dedenne's neck and body connection wasn't quite right, so I fixed it here. Even though I'd already done the line art, I was able to fix it digitally. Sometimes you have to redo things if you're working traditionally, right from the start. But catching mistakes earlier is better in every media, but especially essential when you're working with traditional media. So here's a Pokemon I made up myself. It's called Felintar, which means feeling centaur. And it's a fairy type. I used a horse actually to help me get the pose and the reference for it. And I just freehanded the rest. I actually made this from an older design. And so is the other Pokemon I'm gonna draw in a second. So I thought I would talk about how you color in Pokemon to get it to look like the official style. Basically, the color's main tone is going to be fairly vibrant, but not too vibrant. And the shadows are not going to be that much darker than the main color of the body. It's very much like an overcast lighting scenario with very subtle shadows. The shadows are never super stark or dark. And there's also some subtle highlights. The shadows also get blended into the main body color very slightly at the edges and you can use more circular motions for circular shapes 
and somewhat harsher motions for more straight lines. If there's a very rounded shape, the shading will have a rounded shape to it. If there's a very straight or curved shape, the shading will follow. You need to observe many official Pokemon drawings to kind of get the hang of it. Here's another design showing how you can use a kitten as a reference. This is a creature I made up called Hairbo. It's a first stage Pokemon, in fact. And as you can see, a kitten is a perfect reference because the body and proportions are actually very similar to a kitten. It has a longer neck than a kitten. It's clearly not a kitten. But you can use a kitten or a full-grown cat as good pose reference. And using that as the base, changing what you need to, you can convert it into the Pokemon you're drawing. This is actually true for when you're drawing anything, any mythical creature at all. And when designing Pokemon, remember you can use real animals, mythical creatures, mythical creatures you made up, inanimate objects as a base, and also that they sometimes hold items or wear clothing. As well as that you can design alternate forms or mega evolutions for the Pokemon you'd like to see those for. I hope that this video was enjoyable and helpful to you. There will be many more videos coming up, some of which will be story based, some of which will be product reviews, traditional art, digital art, and many more art tips and advice. And so until next time, goodbye!